What is up everyone? In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about strict composition in Golang. But before we continue, if you're not subscribed yet to the channel, please consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments and jump into the Discord community. Let's go. So strict composition. Let's say we're going to make a game as usual. We're going to give ourselves some, uh, some dopamine injections. So we're going to say type um, a player, which is going to be a strict like this. And we're going to give this guy uh, or girl, we're going to give this a pulse X is going to be a float 64. And we're also going to give this a pulse Y. We're going to make a 2D game and uh, a player needs to have a position so we can move this dude around, right? So uh, let's say we're going to uh, we're going to make this a function on this player. We're going to say P player and we're going to we're going to move this guy and we're going to move him. We're going to say X, Y It's going to be a float 64. And then we're going to basically say something like uh, pulse X um, plus equals X. And we're going to do the same thing with the Y plus equals Y, right? We're going to move this guy. Uh, we could also copy this function and we could say, for example, we're going to teleport. Uh, a teleport function is basically going to directly teleport the player into the position. And this is going to basically offset the position with some delta or something, hey, uh, just for the sake of demonstration, right? So this is cool. Basically, this is our player and you can see uh, we can attach more functions to this player depending on what we all, what we need to do, right? That's all fine. But um, of course, in a game, we're also going to have some enemies, uh, some AI, for example. So we're going to make a type enemy, which is also going to be a strict, of course, and uh, <laughs> just the same thing like the player, actually. We can copy an enemy also uh, has going to be, has going to have a position in the game, right? And you can already see it coming, right? So we're going <laughs> to, it's going to have a move function. So we're going to say func e enemy, uh, I'm going to say move. And uh, yeah, I'm going to say x, y is going to be float 64. What's going on here? Float 64. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm, I'm going to actually explicitly type it out. So you can see how tedious it can be. And it's going to be uh, e, e, just like that, right? And of course, we need to have this teleport function and all these other functions that can uh, be handy for our enemy, which probably is going to be the same. Uh, not every function, but probably most of these functions are going to be the same um, regarding position as the player, right? So this is actually tedious. And it's a, re a, rep a repetitive task. How can we make this better? Well, in Golang, we can do something that is called strict composition or strict embedding, right? So how does it work? Well, <clears throat> let's say um, instead of this pos x pos y, we're going to say we can do something like uh, type position. And that's going to be a stricture. So we're going to say strict. My hands are still cold, so I'm going to be rusty, not, not going to lie. And this position is going to have an X or a small X is going to be a float 64 and it's going to have a Y and it's also going to be a float 64. And if you have a 3D game, you could do a Z uh, if you know what I mean, right? But it's going to be a 2D, so that's fine. <clears throat> so we have a position here, which has an X and a Y coordinate uh, representing a location in the game. And then instead of uh, in our player here, we're going to delete these positions and we are going to directly embed this position into the player. We're not going to specify any uh, variable naming. We're just going to embed this position directly into the player strict, right? So we can actually um, delete these functions move and teleport. And instead of actually attaching these functions uh, receivers to the player, we are going to make these functions into the position. So we're going to say P uh, position and we're going to say uh, move, right? And we're going to say X y float 64 and we're going to do the same thing uh, p x plus equals uh, x and copy this make it a y just like that and then let's copy this function and we're going to say <clears throat> teleport of course and we're going to delete these pluses like that right so now we have actually a strict position we have some functions attached to that position and the player is basically embedding this position, right? So what we could do, let's make a function new player real quick. 
uh, like this. We're gonna return a pointer to this player. We're gonna return and player. And then we're gonna say it's gonna have a position. And very important to know, if you embed a struct in an other struct, the variable to assign is always gonna be the same name as uh, the struct, right? It's gonna be position. It's gonna be position. And we don't need to specify any variables because Golang will initialize this to the default variable of an int of a float, which is going to be zero, right? All right, so we have this player. And now what you could do, we could make this player here at our main. You could say player is going to be a new player, right? And let's uh, FMT println, uh, for example, player position, right? Uh, okay, it's already cleared. Go run main.go. And we can see that the player position is zero, 00 because it's just initialized to zero. So we could actually, right now, uh, because we embedded, right, we embedded this position into the player, we have actually access to all these variables, but also access to all the functions that are attached to this position, right? So we are actually gonna inherit the behavior, the values and the functions of that position uh, structure we embedded into our player, which is very handy because right now we could just say player move, right? And let's move the player to 0, 01 and 0, 02 or maybe 10, 4 or something, right? And if we run it right now, we can see that the player, his position has changed to the variables we uh, gave it, right? And like I said, we can also use our other function here. It's going to be teleport, right? Teleport, and let's teleport this far away in the game. Um, somewhere, wherever, right? And then we're going to print out the position once again. Let's clear the screen. Go run main.go. And you can see that uh, the player has teleported to the position we gave it. <clears throat> Very nice. The same for our enemy. Instead of uh, doing the shenanigans in our enemy, we could do position at enemy here and actually delete the whole shebang. And let's, for convenience, let's make a constructor for the enemy. So we're going to say new enemy. Enemy like this, of course, change this to enemy, just like that, right? So we have a player here. We also could say enemy, or we could say raid boss, right? I'm going to make a raid boss, and it's going to be a new enemy. And we can uh, copy this function here, call this raid boss. We're going to move the raid boss and then copy this function, and we're going to print out uh, the raid boss position. And <clears throat> let's say it's going to be a raid boss just like that and go run main.go. And we can see that the raid boss also has changed its position. <clears throat> so you can already see this, that by basically just embedding this position with all the functionality attached to the position into our player and enemy strict, we're gonna inherit. I don't like to say that word. It's not an object oriented approach, although it's a discussion. But it's most like, in my opinion, it's more of a composition, strict embedding, more of a composition in your application to uh, have the same behavior of the structure you just embedded into your other structure, right? So that's that. And what you could do, basically, this, the functionality, the possibilities list goes on, right? So what you could do, for example, let's say we have a position, but uh, we want to have a special position because we're going to make a special move for a special enemy, right? So we could do something like type, we're gonna call this special position. What's going on here? Position, <laughs> like that. We're gonna be a structure, right? And instead of the special position, we'll need to have the same behavior as a position, but we are going to add a special uh, function to it. So we're gonna say, we're gonna embed the position here, right? So we have, we have all the functionality from position. We have the X, Y, and we have the move and teleport. But we are going to attach uh, into this, uh, I'm going to call this SP from special position. And we're going to say uh, move special. And move special will take an X, Y float 64. But instead of basically saying um, SP, X, you see, although we don't have specified the X here, we will inherit this uh, behavior from position. And we're going to say that the SPX plus equals um, X times X, for example, right? We're going to do an exponential whatever uh, move. Uh, it's it's going to be a different move than the normal move, right? It's going to be a special move. So we're going to say, 
I don't know, maybe he has some superpowers or I don't know, maybe a boost or but I don't know, man. It's your your imagination. So special position, move special. Uh, we're going to say that the X position is going to be X times X and the Y position is going to be Y times Y. Okay, so let's say that this enemy, um, let's, um, yeah, let's say that this enemy is going to be a special enemy, for example. What you could do is instead of embedding this position, we could say uh, we're going to embed a special position, right? Of course, we need to change it here. We're going to say that the special position, the same name as this one, you see? And we're going to embed, we're going to create an empty special position, which will basically initialize it to zero, defaultly. And instead of, we could do a raid boss, a raid boss move, right? Because raid boss is a new enemy. So that's perfectly fine, right? You could see. Uh, let's clear the screen. Go run main.go. The raid boss is moving normally because special position also embeds position. And position has the move function. So we can actually, although the enemy has special position, we have access to the normal position functions, if that makes sense. But our raid boss also has the move special, right? Uh, move special, just like that. And then let's print the raid boss out. Raid boss move special, just like this. Uh, yeah, perfectly fine. Go run main.go. And you can see this was the normal move function from the position embedded in special position. And this is going to be the move special, which is directly attached to the special, the move, uh, the special position structure. And then of course we do this uh, exponential shenanigans. So it's going to have some crazy location because he has superpowers, right? So that's basically it. And you can see um, it's a very powerful way to... Uh, yeah, to in inherit behavior from from other um, from from other structures, so you can do these common tasks. Um, you don't you don't need to write all that boilerplate to your different um, entities, let's say, but you can actually uh, inherit. <laughs> I would say inherit. I don't like to say it, but it, it actually it is what it is. Um, all that other behavior, and it will make your application much more. Uh, readable, uh, maintainable, extendable, and all that stuff. Of course, uh, I would not basically overuse this stuff, but in certain cases, it's gonna save your life. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments, and jump into my Discord community. And for the people that actually wanna level up a little bit more, I also have a Patreon page with more exclusive tutorials. Check it out and uh, let me know what you think about it. I'm looking forward to see you in, in my next live stream or future video. Peace out.